subscribers and viewers alike. We are in the game to draft. Kinetic now has a chance to start over, get a comp that could be more favorable for them, and they don't want to see Lost Boy on a Catherine. And I think here, Kinetic is planning to like either force Hydra to either ban Adagio, so, or they can pick Adagio first. And I think they're going to build a great composition out of that for Kinetic. All right, that will be interesting to see. We wait for Nemesis Hydra's pick here, or ban here, and they take Vox off the board. So Vox, I'm not too sure what they're going with this unless Nemesis Hydra really wants to like run a composition that is based on like quick burst or like a bunch of melee. But then again, like we mentioned, Kinetic grabbing up this Adagio first, and this is one of their signature picks, mainly because they were the ones that first brought out that weapon Vox um, combining with Adagio, and here they have that chance to actually either bring out another... Um, Ringo works out really well here for them too. And that's so interesting. It must be that Nemesis Hydra has a particular comp in mind and that really uh, only Vox would have really messed it up, so prioritizing it even over the Adagio. Well, not too much where Kinetic, like, they can still run this buff comp using that Ringo, and we've seen the way that they play it, like, they're very comfort, uh, comfortable in terms of this play style, in terms of being aggressive and always rotating as three. Well, I for one am glad that we will get to see Lost Boy Toph on yet another Arden. No one makes plays on Arden like Lost Boy. Yeah, except me. But, um, <laughs> like, we've seen every time that Lost Boy does land on Arden, he's able to, like, maneuver himself. Like, with that last match, we saw his timing on that gauntlet where he pretty much waited it out, where a lot of people will actually throw down the gauntlet really quick. And against a team that pretty much can counter it, having that reflex on the scarf previously, he knew exactly when to throw it out, and he, communica he communicated with his team so well. Kinetic, they get the kind of two permabands from 114. They get both the Fortress and the Adagio. So with this composition, I feel like they have a great chance early up in that jungle, where Adagio, Fortress, he has so much potential, and most likely they'll start off with a swift shooter, making sure that he has that attack speed. And later on, we're gonna see like they'll they'll plan up that vision. They'll make sure that they're controlling that uh, their own tri brush, and they're gonna start rotating up to lane, making sure that buffing up this Ringo. And you know what? This game is gonna be dependent on how well this Ringo does in the lane. All right, and. You have been so good with your predictions. We have one last pick to go here before we get the second match underway. What would you expect to see coming out of Nemesis Hydra? To be honest, hmm, this one's pretty tough, mainly because these guys have been like playing outside of their regular play style and they've been expanding so much. And these teams, they have like secret hideouts where they play scrims <laughs> that nobody... Secret hideouts? Yeah, they play scrims that nobody knows about and on secret accounts. But to be honest, like they have that Black Feather, they have that Arden, and this is actually a very good chance for them to actually uh, secure somebody other in that jungle. Uh, most likely, they'll play Black Feather in the lane. So, to be honest, I, I think like they'll do really well with like how Gangstar Sirius did with that pedal. But knowing them. Yeah, I can't say for sure, but most likely it will be a melee hero. I'm going to look forward to seeing the gauntlets coming out of Lost Boy Top in this game. Uh, last game, Finn, he doesn't care about stuns. He couldn't care less. A couple heroes there on the Kinetic uh, squad that can get out of those sticky situations very easily. Really, only the Scarf was vulnerable to the gauntlets out of game one. Maybe we see some more big plays out of Lost Boy in game two. Yeah, and we saw how well he held out that gauntlet last game. Like, he knew exactly not to over hesitate or not to engage too early where it would be punishing instead. They win it out, they push with that Kraken and they got every single turret. Let's let our casters Action Jackson and Vettius reveal the last pick and take us into the second match. All right, guys, we are here for the second game of this series. Nemesis Hydra will be looking forward uh, to maybe closing this one out. Rhyme is going to be the final pick uh, that they go for here. So this is actually a, a comp that we saw earlier on today. Yeah, this was in the, well, the, the last series that we just cast, and it got to a point they actually played it into the Taka, and that Rhyme was doing crazy stuff there. If you go check out the Vainglory Twitter, they actually have this great little gif of the Rhyme versus Taka 1 versus 1, which was which was pretty close, but the Rhyme... No, no spoilers. Rhyme put up a good fight, and so did the Taka. <laughs> no spoilers. That was, that was as close to a spoiler as you can get. No, what are you talking about? They both put up great fights. They did. 
But you just said who won. No, I didn't. I said Ryan put up a good fight. You said <laughs> so does Taka. Before that, you said Ryan and Blackfeather. You saw this comp win against Taka. Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, moving <laughs> swiftly on, uh, we do unfortunately have another quick pause. I'm saying it out loud because I know it to be true. Um, the prophet is myself. Um, <laughs> you anyway, finally yeah. got a prediction right. Yeah. Yeah. Sui Generis, on the other hand, probably didn't see that one coming. Instantly wiped out by Nemesis Hydra. Hardek finding himself that kill on the rhyme. Very nice work by the Nemesis Hydra guys to pick up a kill so early on, about one minute in. Yep, got caught with your pants between your legs, shopping in the shop early on. Uh, I guess the teams are experiencing a little bit of fatigue, a bit of tiredness. It's been a very long day for the players as well as the staff here. And guys, that you know, if you do get the opportunity, make sure you do give your thanks to the staff here because they have worked their socks off to make sure that we do have a fantastic production, which I do believe that we have had throughout the day. So mad props to the Red Bull Esports Arena here for hosting the event and for doing a fantastic job. Yeah, it's been awesome and I'm looking forward to more games throughout the weekend. It's going to be really good, but this game here is going to be an interesting one. I think. Oh, Whoa, Black Feather! Quick pick up on the Fear of Poseidon. You can see another three-man gank. Nemesis Hydra loves doing this, putting a lot of pressure up in the lane. You'd have thought that. Uh... Oh, it's actually Fear Poseidon. So this is the first time he's experienced this. <laughs> he hasn't under. You know, he doesn't know what it's like to have the three-man gank come up to you in the lane. So Nemesis Hydra making that tactic work once again. And it's interesting that they've made it work without even relying on the crawl. They were able to set it up with the Rhyme and the Black Feather. But first blood going over to Chicken123 on this Black Feather is going to be a great start for Nemesis Hydra. It is indeed. And with two kills under their belts already, they are sitting at a, a fairly nice gold lead of 500. Uh, they're going to be trying to snowball that. Hardek has got to be careful here, though. Sui Generis and Chrissy going on to him. Hardek, not He's done, really yeah. the late game force that a Rhyme becomes yeah. uh, later on is the game so first kill going the way of kinetic make sure to answer back just too aggressive there from Hardek. he felt like he could stall out maybe wait for a rotation down maybe he could just put a bit of poke down he ends up getting collapsed on by the fortress which is something you really should expect this early on into the game high mobility available on that hero combine that with the buff that you get from an adagio just a little bit unfortunate for Hardek. Look at the push coming in super early from Kinetic. They're actually wrecking this turret. They're gonna get Chicken 1, 2, 3 cannot defend. Big play out of Kinetic early on to answer those two kills. I think one of the earliest turrets we've seen so far in the tournament. Kardec wants to reinforce, but he is to the party way too late. Very smart play. They knew they had the positional advantage. Now comes the fight. It is going to be a fight, but I'm not sure it's one Nemesis Hydra want to take Lost Boytov. Just barely able to get out of there. So nearly going down. Hardak trying to find the return kill on a fair Poseidon. Does get it, but now he is super low. Doesn't have the fortified health to get back in. Chicken123 was sort of milling around the edge of that fight for so long. Without doing too much, he is going to fall and Kinetic even up the kills. They have a thousand gold in the lead. Just off of that series of plays. So Kinetic, they do a great job of focusing, well I say they do, they do, I don't think it was a smart decision to focus down onto Lost Boy Toff. You invest a lot of resources down onto the Rome. Uh, so that enabled Hardek to move around into the flank and actually shut down Fear Poseidon because Hardek on that Rhyme was able to get in melee range. And when you do that, then it doesn't matter who you're playing. You're going to struggle against this Rhyme. And so he was able to get the kill down onto Fear Poseidon. But then Chrissy and Sui Generis doing a great job of turning the fight around because Chicken, he was kind of just standing around like a headless chicken, not really sure what to do is Hardek now the one being collapsed on. Yeah, and he is on the wrong side of this wall to get helped out, easily picked up by Kinetic. This is a very different game than the one we saw last time, which is so clean from Nemesis Hydra. Kinetic kind of running away with it so far. Uh, to me, it's very much about why would you leave this Adagio open unless you have a reliable strategy to deal with it because Adagio just fits into so many compositions, especially on this patch. He is super relevant and he's you know he's going to be first pick. So you have to have a clear strategy. And so far, I'm not seeing anything that is reliably dealing with that Adagio. 
Yeah, there hasn't been too many ways for that to happen so far. Hardek does find a nice bit of damage on the Sui Generis here, but you can see with the early, early turret kill coming in from Kinetic, they're actually leveraging that nicely and kind of acting, uh, using that position as a pivot to invade the enemy jungle. It's being very successful so far. They have taken a huge amount of gold just out of the jungle alone. Hardek is forced to make this invade, which might end up biting him in the butt. You see Lost Boy Toph has no real support, goes down again. Kinetic are running away with this game. They're having a great start and they're using that momentum to their advantage. They have the level uh, lead right now. Currently, Chrissy and Fear beside them both sitting at level six. And they're gonna try and take away this tier two tower, turret even, sorry, it's six minutes into the game. And they're gonna get it. I mean, again, nothing really that Nemesis Hydra can do. This is so radically different from last game. I really am surprised that Nemesis Hydra have fallen apart in this way. Kinetic, I mean, they could potentially close this one out in a close time to the, the record so far, which is TSM's first game. Well, Nemesis Hydra have a composition that takes a while to ramp up. So Kinetic are doing a good job of utilizing the early game strengths that they have with the Ringo, with the Fortress. And then when you further support that with the Adagio, it makes it so much harder to actually go for fights in this early game. And on top of that, Nemesis Hydra are just losing their jungle over and over and over again. Just have a look at the farm and how much is being denied right now for Nemesis Hydra. It is a tremendous amount, and with the gold mine being picked up here as well, decent payout for the side of Kinetic. They are really building a substantial lead. 3k ahead at only about 7 minutes is tremendous. Uh, that's actually kind of an intimidating amount for your Nemesis Hydra. I think they're going to be under a lot of pressure right now. And we've heard Rome talk about it. We mentioned it before as well. Nemesis Hydra, historically known as a bit of an emotional team. Uh, my emotions would be running hot. Uh, at the moment, given the current situation. It certainly would be. Look at this, once again, another push being set up by Kinetic. They don't want to try and force a fight just yet, given how close Hydra are to the turret. As well as that Hardik has now hit level 7, hasn't quite yet completed any major items. So this is actually a great position for Kinetic to be in because they just, they have the item advantage, they have the level advantage, they have the gold advantage. They need to just keep pressing on with this lead. And they're doing a great job of that. You know, they're continuing to do the things that they've been doing for a while now, such as invading uh, the back camps. But they're also trying to find picks. And I think that's a smart thing to be doing here, because basically one pick, uh, I, I actually believe would equal a turret at this point, uh, just because they're so far ahead. I like that they're going for their minion mine as well. This will give them a lot of momentum in lane. Basically, every time their wave pushes to that turret, it's going to be a while uh, before Hydra can address that. So, And also, going for that at, at that point means that they can take their back camps. So Hardik can't do what he did earlier. He can't try and go find some gold somewhere on the map because there's no gold anywhere on the map. No, there isn't. It doesn't help the Kinetic literally taking away all of the jungle as they uh, look for the flank play. Yeah, they're trying to find an engagement here. Sui Generis does have to be careful on the fight up more than the Kichu. We've got the gauntlet out of Lost Boy oh, Top this time. Fear massive. Poseidon, he is taking so much damage. He is going to go down. Hydra, this is the fight that they've been needing to take for a while now. They might get more. Trying to go into Sui Generis behind the turret. Chicken123 has a lot of damage right now. Just needs a bit more cooldowns. Finds the kill. Chrissy, stunned up hard. Ek doing some nice damage, but with Reflex Block Shield is going to keep him alive. Nemesis Hydra might finally find their first turret of the game. So Kinetic feeling confident with the item advantage, with the level advantage. They go for the flank play, collapse down onto Nemesis Hydra, but this is where that Rhyme is doing so much work, because he can see the engage coming. He uses the ability to kite back and effectively force Kinetic to walk into all of his abilities. And then on top of that, the split that came out from Kinetic is really what made them lose the fight. The Gauntlet comes down, uh, Chrissy gets separated from Fear Poseidon, and then a Valkyrie falls on top of his head and completely denies him any ability to get involved in the engagement. So Nemesis Hydra, another fantastically executed fight, and this is what we saw from them in game one. All right, but this hasn't dissuaded Kinetic from trying to make these plays. No. They are actually moving back into the enemy jungle, doing what they were doing earlier and just denying as much money as possible uh, to Nemesis Hydra. Nemesis Hydra, I think, might be hard-pressed to find another fight like that because it was very much an overextension of Kinetic rather than Hydra getting the perfect engage or something like that. And as a result, they're kind of reliant on Kinetic to misplay 
if they want to find a fight like that again. They certainly are. It's uh, At this point, it's very much Kinetic's game to lose, but Hydra do have a great composition that scales very well. The, the longer that this game gets drawn out, and the more that Ringo starts to fall off relative to the Black Feather, you will see Hydra coming out ahead uh, in every few exchanges. So... Uh, kinetic again, they need oh. to use this momentum. Hardek is running right in. Look at Fear Poseidon taking so much damage on the back line. Hardek on the flip side is just sustaining through this. Chrissy the next target. Lost Boy Top, he's got the gauntlet. He gets stunned onto Sui Generis. Might even set up for a future kill onto him, but he easily picks up the one onto Chrissy. Big fight for Nemesis Hydra, and that was actually the inverse of what we were talking about earlier. They straight up initiated that and won it. The tables have turned, Vettius. This is the the point that I was literally just talking about. The longer this game gets drawn out, the fights are going to start going towards Nemesis Hydra. And the big thing is about how aggressive Hardek is. He had no hesitation just running into the back line using his tier 2 boots, getting in range of Fear Poseidon and dropping everything on top of him. He dropped the Valkyrie. He managed to land the Winter Spire. The Chill Winds, he got everything he locked up. For Fear Poseidon, which then enabled Chicken to get the cleanup kills. Speaking of Chicken, really bad position for him right now. It's going to be hard to get away. Already used one rose offensive. Look at the damage coming through from Fear Poseidon. Easy pickup for Kinetic, and that was way too far up the map for the side of Hyder. They don't have any, any leverage to work with on the map right now. I got really thrown off there because I was looking at him and was like, wow, he's 0 and 1900 deaths? And then I'm like, oh no, that's his health, right? Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> it's clearly been a, yeah, it's been, it's been it's a long right. day. <laughs> it's all right. I was like, wow, he's died a lot this game. <laughs> no, he's actually 4 2 and 1, doing pretty well so far. Gone for the early Shiver Steel and Atlas Pauldron, so actually gone very heavy on the utility and hard at going towards more of a sustain build. So Nemesis Hydra don't even have that much damage just just yet in terms of their itemization. Uh, minion can lead up uh, from HH Kinetic looking to try and set up the siege right now. Yeah, I mean, these minions are extremely tanky. Lost Boy oh, Top, look at the Lost damage Boy. down onto him right off the bat. You can see Fear Poseidon just destroying the health bars of Nemesis Hydra. That's going to force Lost Boy back to base to heal up. And we've got another big wave coming through here. Minion candied up again. Hardek, got to be careful. He's going to go down. The dive works from Kinetic, and they're going to find this turret off the back. Wow, Kinetic able to get themselves a pick and a turret. Twelve and a half minutes into the game. We we just saw the momentum swing towards Hydra and then all of a sudden Kinetic just go back to what they were doing before and find, hey guys, this works. Why did we stop doing it? Why did we let them engage? And then they were able to take another turret. So if H, H Kinetic can keep this up, they may be able to bring us to a game three. They absolutely might and they'll be looking to do it. It'll be the first game three of the day. And uh, Kinetic, you know, with the success of their sister team, Velocity, early on, I'm sure they're looking for uh, maybe a win here to just really rep the Halcyon Hammers brand. Attack of the Pack is going to get popped, though. We're going to oh, see that fight. Big Gauntlet Valkyrie. goes down. There's the ultimate out of Adagio as well, but on the back line, Chicken 1, 2, 3. Nice damage onto Fear Poseidon. He finds that first kill. The damage threat is down for Kinetic, but it's only Lost Boy Toph, 1 versus 2. Admittedly, we've seen, we've this, seen before. this before, <laughs> but he doesn't have many turrets to work with no, this time. Or, you know, a gold mine or a Kraken or anything like that, so... Lost Boy, he gets away, but two people die for Hyder. Yes, they do. And I was amazed at how quickly Hardek actually fell right there. Typically, uh, Rhyme is the guy that we expect to be really tanky on the front line. It actually takes a surprising amount of time to shut him down. But with the Shadow Glass completed onto Chrissy and with the damage that Verse of Judgment does at level 11, I guess it was simply a matter of underestimating that burst potential that came out from Chrissy. And Hardik ends up giving away his life, so it ends up going two for one in the favor of Kinetic. But these fights are getting so close between these two teams. They really are. And I think, you know, we saw rays of hope from Nemesis Hydra already with a few fight wins. If this game goes on much longer, I think we're going to see more of those. The problem is that any one mistake is going to be infinitely more punishing than it was earlier due to the fact that so many turrets are already killed by Kinetic. If they win one fight, they're already very close to your vein crystal. They certainly are. You know, as you rightly said, the turret advantage is heavily in the favor of Kinetic right now. Four to two. Four and a half thousand gold lead in favor of Kinetic right now. Just having a quick look across the islands. Warhorn completed for Sui Generis, which means it's going to be so much easier for them to set up these engagements. Crucible finished for Fear Poseidon. Wow.
Um, that is very unique. I guess he's built it towards the uh, dealing with the Valkyrie damage and the chill winds. Once you pop that, it just mitigates a lot of the burst that comes out from Hardak. All right, we might see a fight developing here. That's going to be the Hellfire Brew down onto Hardak. He's moving extremely slow right now. Checking one, two, three. Trying to deal with Fear Poseidon on the backside, but he's not doing that much just yet. Fear Poseidon actually survives this time. Hardak, he's taking a lot of burst. He's trying to get that fortified health stacking up, but he goes down. It's an ace for Kinetic. And like I said earlier, they're already deep in the base of Hydra, so this push is going to be devastating. They should at least get themselves one turret, especially with this minion wave pulling in from the side of Kinetic and simply the biggest thing in that fight was the fact that Chicken could not 1v1 Fear Poseidon. He was able to kite around long enough to take Chicken down and even though Hardik was able to kill Chrissy, it didn't matter because Fear Poseidon could then just clean up the fight with the immense damage that he has available to him. Bone Saw, Sorrow Blaze, uh, Tyrant's Monocle, he's just at a really strong point in the game right now. So if you just leave him free to his own devices, he will carry these fights, and you saw it in that last one. Look at how much damage they're doing for Kraken right now. They're killing it extremely fast. Nemesis Hider don't have an opportunity to contest this, really, and as soon as they see that Kraken unleashed, they're going to be backing away pretty fast to their base. They know that this next push with only one turret remaining is going to be a hard one to defend. I'm not actually sure it's doable. I think the Kraken health is just too much that even if they ace the team, uh, how, how do you stop the Kraken from killing your base? Yeah, exactly that. It's a super tough one to call. The, you, you don't really have the wave clear to deal with the Kraken. You've also got to deal with this siege that is constantly coming out from Kinetic. And things are looking bad for Nemesis Hydra. Very likely that we're going to be going to a game three. But as we're both from EU, we know all about these comebacks. And it wouldn't surprise me if Nemesis Hydra pulled one out of their hat. I mean, we do know all about them, but I have to admit, it would surprise me. I just feel like the Kraken is too big a force for them to deal with right now. You can see they're trying as fast as they can. That's going to be gone. Going down by Lost Top, already nearly dead. Chicken123 finds Fear Poseidon on the backside, but uh, not game. enough damage. And this is almost certainly going to be game kinetic, taking us to our first game three three of the day. It's what you'd expect when you have Seed 4 going up against Seed 5. Very close series between the two teams and HH Connect look like a completely different team in the second game. They picked a composition